So guys, we made it to the last video of this series, or at least uh, of this working series. I'll, I'll probably still have some work to do um, behind the scenes, um, which I've actually done for this video, uh, just to kind of get things uh, going and because I'm kind of on a tight schedule right now. So um, I'm going to walk you through what I've updated since we last left off. Um, Essentially, I've added some some links and um, necessary information we're going to need going forward to the theme itself. Uh, the biggest addition so far is a uh, modal, which if you don't know what that is, it's essentially this thing. When you click watch a video, my entire plan f um, for that button was to introduce this uh, overlay modal of a video. Right now I have a placeholder video. It's one of my own tutorials I just published uh, about a week or two ago on WebCrunch. Um, go check it out. Anyway, uh, this one eventually be a product video um, trying to capture the essence of H2O drink. Uh, so uh, to implement that, I, I needed to add a bit to our theme um, as well as JavaScript to our theme, which we hadn't done yet. So. Um, on top of that, I introduced some interactivity to uh, the scrolling. Um, this is essentially um, adjusting the positioning, uh, top and bottom, or yeah, just top positioning um, as you scroll based on your browser's uh, scroll top function. There's, it's included in JavaScript, but um, we made use of jQuery on this. Um, as well as a library for the video that makes it responsive called FitVid. Uh, you basically, it's it's very pretty much drop and play kind of plugin. So uh, I'll walk you through all that right now. So first thing I'll cover is the overlay or modal as I call it. Uh, to get this into place, I have kind of a skeleton I use for um, many of my projects. So over on the left here, I have our code that resembles, if you're familiar with Bootstrap at all, it kind of resembles the way they write theirs. Um, we definitely don't go into, or I definitely don't go into as much um, support for all the browsers and stuff as they do, because I, I don't need to necessarily. So I don't want that much code. That is why I'm not using Bootstrap for this project. Um, Included in this modal is a custom field, which I just showed you. It's on our uh, header, landing page header field group. Um, I just added a new field. In particular, this field is pretty neat. The uh, recent update to the plugin allows you to embed um, its O embed um, as the content type. So you simply supply a link and it syncs from there, uh, which is cool less work on your end. Um, so that wraps up the content addition. Um, I did add the, the target links to say like our menu itself. Um, so when you click that, this try button in our main menu, it links to the buy section, which I added an ID on. Uh, so everything will kind of just link to that for the call to action. Um, so on top of that, you might notice the text appearing a little lighter. Um, I've added, some people have shown this, but I like it because it looks good on my screen. So uh, uh, WebKit font smoothing. So that works good for Chrome or Safari browsers, Firefox, sorry, you don't see this. Um, but yeah, essentially these links now link to certain sections. The learn more will link, link to or link to the benefits. I probably needed to adjust the offset on that, but I can go back and do that. That links to this. Um, so yeah, going back to our modal, the code, as you saw, uh, was added uh, into our main um, template, which is our front page template. I added that as just another include. Uh, so it's another template part just at the bottom. The actual content gets fixed positionally. So it's it takes up the whole width of the browser. Um, and that style is in this file, which we've included as well in our main style sheet. Uh, so it's essentially just the bare bones stuff I need to get this to work. We've included a uh, close button in the top right. Um, this background color, uh, a max width, 
to set and some padding on the top so this is shifted down a bit uh, styles for a close button so it's positioned correctly and the modal uh, SVG itself so here we've just added a few styles so when you hover it's a white color um, so I'll go back real quick to that modal so here's what we just styled um, the button I made uh, wrapped in the SVG or the SVG is wrapped in the button uh, we've added an ID to the modal itself which is important in a minute I'll get to our JavaScript um, and here we've included our video uh, you might notice a div around this um, that's part of the call to our fitvid plugin which is important which I'll talk about in a second again when we get to our JavaScript uh, so to get JavaScript to work in the WordPress you need to do a few things um, especially since we hadn't added it yet to our project I added a file to the dev folder which is called app.js um, I needed to quit gulp at that point and rerun it and it compiled our JS into what you see here which isn't much which is good um, and then I've also added uh, fitvids uncompressed into our distribution folder here um, don't add that to the dev folder I've had instances where that kind of conflicts so you don't want to compress that into something like this um, at the moment uh, so inside of I mean those files are good and great you create them but they don't just automatically appear on the page so um, inside the functions file you'll need to register scripts and this is the right way to do this in your WordPress install um, many people might include it in their their footer or header and that works but um, this way I think at, you know ties into a lot of the core uh, WordPress core features so um, essentially what I've queued uh, that you haven't seen is the jQuery itself is bundled by default with WordPress you can include it and queue it just like this um, you can queue your own custom scripts which I have done here uh, essentially you give it a name or an alias um, you call the template directory which is just basically the theme directory um, and give the path to it um, this array here tells that it, it is dependent on jQuery so make sure it comes after this uh, portion um, I think you can include a version here we just leave it null for now and then true in this space means it will load in the footer and not the header which for most JavaScript you want to do so I put my app my main application file last I called it app um, you notice if well when it does compile in our disk folder it, it adds the dot min alias to the file name that's on purpose uh, we actually set that up in the gulp file itself if you look very closely right here so it concatenates everything and throws it into one file pretty cool uh, so going forward um, that is the groundwork to get everything going to get this stuff to fire and you know do what it's doing we need some JavaScript to make it at least interact a little nicer um, I didn't add a ton of it but there is some stuff I throw in by default um, this one I copied by Mr. Uh, Coyer on CSS Tricks. It's his uh, snippet for uh, smooth scrolling when you click a hashed link. So you saw I stubbed out the link to go to the buy section. This goes kind of quick, but it, it's way smoother than just a direct hash. You know, it's not so jumpy. So it kind of essentially adds a very, very light animation on the, the whole process. Um, this file in itself, to, to not conflict with uh, WordPress's jQuery, I enqueued uh, the document this way. You need to provide a doc-ready ready, uh, statement to make sure everything uh, waits till the document's loaded to do these functions. Um, on top of that, I create a namespace, so if any reason or any plugin that's out there might have... Um, some sort of function that's the same call um, this is how I kind of work with that 
Um, you might look at some of my code and say, hey, you could have made, you know, done way better than that. And I'm like, I could very well have done that. But um, I was just kind of going along rapidly to get this stuff going. So uh, I've created a few functions inside of our, our giant namespace object here, which is called H2O. So how the namespace works is it just has sub functions or objects inside this object, which is displaying as we see it. Um, so to call those, you actually have to go grab that namespace, grab the object you want to call, and then call the function. I do it all just like this. You can do it in line if you want to, whatever you guys want to do. Anyway, so the first main function that ties into our watch video button here is um, one called video modal. Um, if you remember in our content um, screen, we gave this an ID of watch, which you see right there. On top of that, inside the header, I gave um, the button itself a class of watch target. Um, there might be instances where I uh, link to this video other places on the screen or on the site, so I made that a class. Um, so going into our header, you'll see that the button right here, this is our primary button, which is this one. I added that watch target class to that. So that's all good and great. Um, so we have that as a variable or const um, because it's not going to change. Um, and then our close button as well, which you saw in the actual modo code. Um, so essentially we just add a click handler on the close button to remove the class of show. So you'll, if you're, I don't know if you're following along, if you decided maybe try to or mock something I'm doing, um, I added a class to our base file, which is called show and I made it display block and important. Um, currently won't work without important. So I, I left that on there. Uh, and to actually fire the, the modal, we just do this. So we take our link, watch target, on click. We prevent the default um, of an actual anchor link uh, from going anywhere so it doesn't reload the page. And then we add the class show, which essentially does this. Okay, so moving on, uh, I've included a FitVids library um, that is I showed you before is in our disk folder on uncompromised everything's the way you can download it um, from these links uh, this is from Dave and Chris from CSS tricks and uh, the shop talk show so I love those guys uh, definitely follow them um, so that essentially just makes the video YouTube videos or embedded videos responsive because they're a nightmare when they aren't. Um, so I've tried to toy with that on my own, but man, that plugin just does the trick. So highly recommended. Um, so we just essentially wrapped the iframe or the embedded video with a div that's got the class of video. And this is how you target that. And then finally we added the parallax kind of styles here to these two images just to give a little more um, wow factor, I guess, into the page. I don't like to overdo it with this stuff, but um, I thought it was kind of neat to try since when they're sitting um, static on the design, in our design, they were overlapping. So as you get down the page, they start to kind of transcend past each other, which is cool. Uh, but all that's basically doing is calculating the, it's using a built-in JavaScript scroll top function then you grab that element or that data on your scroll based on where you're at. And we, we tie, we bind that to the X variable. Uh, here we grab the, the photo that's Jamie and then the one that's the logo image. Um, then they already have top CSS top, um, attributes. So I just tied into that as opposed to doing anything different. So you can adjust that with uh, jQueries.css function or method. Um, and then you can pass in 
we could have just passed in one parameter and avoided the little uh, object oriented approach but um, I went ahead and did this for the cleanliness of it so here we pass in the CSS property of top we grab our scrolled um, div there um, I actually didn't really need this X after all if they're looking at this interesting um, and anyway uh, we multiply it by a very small number and want to have or they, they both have the same um, number but one is negative if you see this here and one is positive so one will scroll up one should scroll down as you see and then I add pic pixels as the um, unit value simply because M's are it goes a little crazy pixels is smaller in terms of units um, and then I did a quick function for a mobile screen so you can target the window width uh, with JavaScript by grabbing the window itself if it's smaller than 1200 pixels I turn this off essentially or if it's greater than 1200 pixels I fire this function which as you can see there's a function within this uh, function so then all of those fire below so they wait till the documents loaded and then they run and there we have it so um, I think that about wraps it up there'll be some more tweaks I'll do probably behind the scenes but um, I appreciate you guys following along if you made it this long or this far um, it's been fun and I hope you'll uh, maybe subscribe or um, come check out more of my uh, articles or videos coming up so all right thanks